Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Well, it's quite late on a Monday night. I am a little tired because we did markets yesterday. I spent most of yesterday afternoon and today getting ready for a cyclone that is um, on track to hit north of here, not very far. And we're in a storm surge zone. It's only at the moment a category one when it crosses comes close to the coast they say it will probably intensify to a class category two possibly a three but the problem is we're in a storm surge zone so right now we have king tides happening and if it crosses where the coast when it's predicted around 9 30 a.m on wednesday morning it will hit a king tide causing a storm surge causing flooding and cutting us off um, we're in the yellow zone, so you have red, orange, yellow. Yellow means if it's a three to four meter storm surge, if it hits a king tide, it will be more than four meters. So you have to batten down and clean up and make sure everything, make sure you've got enough food for five days, make sure you've got clean clothes for five days in case you have to evacuate, water, batteries, all that sort of things. People everywhere get ready for a storm to hit or as we have a cyclone jasper so because we're losing internet and I may not get to talk to you for a few days I thought I would do this I will be releasing my make along for 2024 all being well on Friday the 15th of December so keep an eye out for that video so this one is about advents yes there are a lot of people doing advent openings. So I've had some comments about advents, how they're not for them, they don't enjoy them. Um, they've never tried them, never been interested in trying them. Um, they don't fit into their yarn budget because they can be a little exy. And also most of them, about 98% are pure wool. It's very hard to find an acrylic advent. And I do have a friend, or a couple of friends, who are really allergic to wool and would do an advent if it was in acrylic. And that's why this video came about after a discussion about advents with my Yarny Friends subscribers. So let's get started. Doing an advent on a budget or all to suit yourself, to be unique. So first of all, you could do what my very first advent was. So a friend gave me a, um, a tea advent calendar from a tea shop and I really enjoyed that. But I must have been talking to the boys about I hadn't planned a yarn advent and it was a couple of years ago. And they went off and took my eight ply three weight DK scrap basket and made me an advent calendar. Me, I'm very OCD. I have to have eight ply basket, you know, a four ply basket. I can't mix my yarns in baskets. I have learned over the years to knit different weight of yarns or crochet different weight of yarns together, but they have to be separate. So they took the eight ply basket, reeves and thing, um, thing got some paper bags from the supermarket and reeves helped with the color coordination because Things colour coordination in isn't exactly great. And they did up little bags, one for each day till the 24th, with scrap yarn from my eight ply basket. They put little treats in there, and um, like, for example, one of the funny treats, and I'll have to cover him up, was my Rudy Santa pen that I still have. Um, that made me laugh. They weren't all chocolate or sweet treats, but that's fine. You could do sweet treats like I currently have these little mini wagon wheels, which are like a chocolate biscuit. I have these candy popping elves, which are chocolate and candy that pop. And one of my favorites, these chomp um, candies, which are tw lollies, which are like a little wafer biscuit with chocolate. So when they did it up, they put like 20 grams of scrap yarn, could have been a bit more, could have been a bit less because it was the boys, and they put a treat or a special thing with it. I got notebooks, I got needles, I got a pen, 
I got a Chiquito. I remember some of the things I've got. And actually, I really enjoyed it. Even though it was my scrap yarn, I didn't know what colour was coming. And I like getting the surprise treat. On the 25th day, they gave me a little parcel which had a notebook to celebrate the end of the advent. So there's a tip for you. My tip number one, if you're on a budget, um, you've never tried an advent, you could do that. You can buy some really cheap party bags. I bought these, there's 12 in that and they cost me $2. So you could do a 12 day advent or you could do a 24 advent by getting two. You could actually put your own scrap yarn in the bags and treats what have you seal them and then give them to a family member or friend to number them in any order so you won't know what's coming out when you open it or they could bag up the yarn and treat for you but that's the way to do it on a budget and to try one i made i started with a rectangular blanket just granny stitch i think it was a tutorial from ophelia talks and by the time I got to day 24, I loved it so much. I continued for a very long time just adding eight ply scraps to it till I made a queen size blanket, which is very much loved. It washes beautifully. There's no pilling. And yes, I still have that. And hopefully I'll have a picture at the end of the video for you to see. But there you go. You can make your own budget advent if you want one. And you could plan it now. If you did your yarn throughout the year, your advent could be a 2024 memory advent project with your own scraps and you've made it yourself. The other thing you can do is you can find a yarny friend and do an advent swap. You could um, do it with scraps or you could throughout the year when you find when you know their favorite yarn like everyone knows I like three weight eight ply DK for normal projects and I like four weight for amigurumis you could work out with a friend to do a swap now um, you could buy whatever's on special in that particular yarn all year and do 20 grams 25 gram balls mix up the colors and bag it the same way and put a little treat if you're going to do it with a friend make sure you set a budget and certainly um, include the postage in that budget if you have to post it away for example as much as I love my yarny corner advent which I just have to remove some things because it's junk on top of it it came in this lovely box um, has a lid and I can use the box later but the weight of that box would have added to the postage so be really conscious of how you're planning to send it because I did an overseas advent and I actually gave 2400 gram balls as the advent and by the time I boxed it all up it was really quite expensive to send overseas having said that I would be willing to do an advent swap with anyone in Australia for next year. If, the, if you want to do a swap, contact me via email and we can work something out. But definitely stick to a budget. Now the other tip, tip number three, is early in the new year, people who have sold advents this year will discount the ones they haven't sold, especially on Etsy. So make sure you check those out because there is nothing wrong with doing a 2023 advent or a 2022 advent in 2024 because yarn does not go off or age and it's entirely up to you. You will get a good advent calendar with a big discount. So that's tip number three. Now checking my notes because I want to make sure. Um, So basically that was my three tips. You could do one with scrap yarn and do it by yourself. Just get someone else to number it and vary it up so it's not predictable and it's a bit of fun for you. You could do a swap with a friend, whether it's new yarn or scrap yarn. As long as you discuss and you're quite clear 
about your budget and that you're confident that if you send one, you will get one back. Because I'd hate for you to go to all the trouble of sending one and not receiving one back. That this is a good Yanni friend that you have faith and trust in, not just some random person who offers to do it with you. And make sure you check out those budgets and markdowns that happen in the new year on old advents because there's nothing wrong with those. And they don't all have to be yarn. We are a yarny channel, but I have been really enjoying watching Mad Mimi, um, Laura, open her seed advent because she, most of my subscribers have been with me for a while. No, I like gardening. I love seeing tea opening advents. I like watching advent openings. I wasn't sure... I, I enjoyed last year, but I picked the wrong project. I picked, it was way too small and I was left with a lot of yarn. And this year I wasn't sure because I was umming and ahhing when I opened it, but I found the perfect project, the Stephen West Rain or Shine Blanket. I love it. It's probably one of his easiest patterns he's got on his pattern selling list, but I do enjoy it and I do enjoy swapping the yarn around. So there you have it. If you're into making baby blankets, you could do baby um, advent and do baby yarn and come up with a baby project. That's my tip to those who are finding it financially disadvantaged in having an advent. Because really, anyone can have one if you really get creative about how you do it. So there you go, guys. Part two of this video will be me opening my day 11 and 12 of my Yarny Corner Advent that I bought this year from the UK. Now, that's the other drawback, being in Australia. I'm eight, nine hours ahead, something like that. So when I open day 11, it's not day 11 up there or day 12 in the Northern Hemisphere. So, spoiler alert. If you, don't, if you have this advent from this year's My Yarny Corner, you need to say goodbye and thank you for stopping by because I would hate to spoil your advent opening for day 11 and 12. For those of you who are interested in seeing my progress on my Rain or Shine blanket and um, day 11 and 12 of my advent openings because I haven't done very many at all, then stay tuned and watch part two. Part two coming up next. Bye for now. Hi, spoiler alert. I'm about to do my opening of day 11 and 12 of my advent from my Yarny Corner. And if you haven't opened yours, then I suggest you say goodbye and we see you next time. I will be showing the progress on my advent project also. So, Day 11 and 12. That's the old boxes. So there's day 11. I open them from the back from the bottom because I want to keep the numbers. Oh wow. Day 11. Isn't that lovely? Quite orange, greens, blues. I'm thinking maybe some sort of fish. I'm not really sure because they're themed on animals. I haven't done many openings. No sweetie. Um, sweeties were for the first week from day one to seven. And they stopped after that. And Thing who winds my um, advent minis into balls said he would go on strike if he didn't get a treat to do it. So I have been giving him the treats I spoke about before. Wagon wheels, chomps, all open upside down. These crispy the elf ones, he doesn't really like those, they're a bit sweet. Um, he did want English lollies but I couldn't get any because of the cyclone. I haven't been to the one and only shop that sells English lollies. Anyway, that is day 11. So day 12, let's get that out. Day 12, ta-da! Oh, 
day 12 has a lolly. I thought they were only the first week because there hasn't been any up till now from day 7. Anyway, day 12. I do like this. This is beautiful. I really like these greens. And I'm not a green person, but I do like the paler greens and this really bright green. He actually gets an English lolly. He will be happy. So that is my advent for day 11 and 12. Um, and in the first part of the video, I gave you a reason why I'm opening both. And I thought I'd share with you my progress on my advent. Sorry, I'm clunking and making noise on a glass table. So, my advent project is the Rain or Shine Blanket by Stephen West, which is a paperboard pattern. I've not shown it very often. Um, and I have been doing transitioning with some of my older um, advent yarns from last year or minis that I bought. So I think, it's curling a bit there. <laughs> last time I showed you, I was at the polar bear there. And I have gone along and I've either used the advent or I've incorporated a mini from me. With the grey, I doubled up on the grey. I got thing to wind it into two um, 10 gram balls and used all the grey. Currently, I, I am a little behind. Is it 10, 11, 12, 10, 9? I think this was day 8, but don't quote me on it. it and it was the colours like a parrot. And I am combining it with a colour from last year to soften it and to use up some of last year's Advent Mini that I had. So right now the two of them are going in together because this is a DK weight pattern. And what you do is, and that's why there will be a lot of ends. I have done a bit of weave in the stem, but I do plan to sew them in and I probably will start soon. I love this. I am really enjoying it. The weight of the bottom, the way I'm holding it is causing it to curl. But there you go. I thought I might get bored with it, but I don't. I, and I think what helps is having it for an advent where I change colours. So the next one, I will drop the parrot one, because I'm pretty sure that was themed on a parrot. And I may even drop my... Um, transition yarn and do both of the next color which I've already opened so yeah I'm a few days behind but that's because we've been getting ready for this cyclone that will arrive sometime on Wednesday because today is Monday night but highly recommend this pattern um, I think he does it in solid colors but I am enjoying doing it for my advent um, that's where this year's Advent started with Bumblebee and then I've gone along. Most of it is Advent with a couple of transition yarns, but not very many. So, my Yarny Corner Advent, day 13 coming up. I don't know when I'll have internet. If um, we get the big storm surge they're expecting, we'll probably lose power and internet for anything up to five days. So I will see you when I see you. Take care, stay safe, have a lot of fun knitting your advents and consider for next year coming up with your own unique advent. Bye for now.